Uh, this is an area where there's, I think, some confusion uh, in the market. Um, in truth, and especially in the States, people are using the term personalization increasingly to refer to the ability for customers to customize their web environment. So you go to a shop and if you like you know, having a blue background or a green background, you can customize your environment. Uh, and to be sure, that's a kind of personalization, but for me that's, uh, that's really customization and is obviously very different from, from what we do. When I use the word personalization, I refer to the ability to market and interact with customers on an individual basis, on a personal basis, to make personal, personalization. So the, uh, the difference in, in my mind is that um, a, a recommendation is, uh, uh, is something that anyone can make uh, and is not necessarily based on the customer's needs or interests. I can recommend a product. I am selling uh, some products here. I can recommend them. I think they're great. You know, they're on sale today. Why don't you buy one? That's a recommendation. Uh, that's not what we do. We try to understand the interests and the tastes of each individual customer and find the set of products that the, that customer is most likely going to respond to. And one customer may respond to different products than another customer. And it's our job, it's our job to find out which products are right for each customer as an individual. And to me, that's personalized recommendations. That's what personalization means for me. I think it's absolutely essential. Uh, you know, you go to a big shop on the web these days and it's got hundreds and thousands of products and, you know, in many cases customers are expected to wander around that shop and find the products that they want to buy. And from a business proposition point of view, I think that's very lazy. You know, that's like renting a big warehouse and filling it with all sorts of junk and letting the customers wander around your big warehouse to find products that are interesting. Uh, now you can do that, maybe you're a discount supplier and, and that's all you want to do, but uh, I think to be competitive online, to offer really differentiated services to customers online, you have to do a lot more than that. You have to reach out and try to understand what each customer came to your site looking for, and then you have to proactively offer it to them. If you wait for them to search for it or to find it, you've done them a disservice. You've shifted the burden of finding things onto the customer. Uh, that's not the way good service value works in the real world, and that's not the way it's going to work on the web in the future. And people need to reach out, understand, and serve their customers as individuals. That's nothing new. That's just business. Well, I think I've already covered it in a sense, but you know, the, uh, just finding things that are suitable for users is, uh, is not adequate to, uh, to create real value for consumers. Uh, you have to understand that shopping isn't about people buying things that they need or buying things that you think are suitable for them. You know, what's happened to shopping is that People use shopping to define themselves. It's about building personal brand. It's how people discover themselves and express themselves these days. And the merchant online has a role as a facilitator of that process to help people discover who they are and who they want to be and what they want to say about themselves to other people. And the recommendation role in that process is to get to the bottom of that. Uh, to not only find out what people should buy from, uh, from the merchant point of view or from a supplier or a manufacturer point of view, but find out what people really want to buy in order to you know, realize uh, their potential and to express themselves as individuals. And unless you really understand how shopping is a form of human expression and how essential it is to, uh, to the way people create their identities these days, you can't really make recommendations.
I think the, the one thing that I, I'd like all web merchants to understand, the recommendations are, are not uh, simply an uh, ancillary feature of their website. The uh, recommendations are how your customers explore your product set. You know, if you don't give them recommendations, then the only thing they have to help them navigate through your giant warehouse is categories and search functions. All things that require users' time and energy to use. So recommendations really are the customer's only friend in finding products. And if you're not willing to highlight the recommendations on your pages, the customers won't realize their, the full potential of those recommendations. And they won't really experience the full service value offering that you, you have for your customers. Because recommendations really are what set your site apart from all the other sites that offer the same products at similar prices. Well, I guess it's, it's pretty obvious that when you do recommendations well, you'll get higher conversion rates. You know, customers obviously buy the, the products that you suggest. And when they finish shopping on that particular day, one hopes that they've bought on average uh, more items or they've uh, uh, spent more money on your site than they would have otherwise. But there's a lot more to the benefits of recommendations than those very short-term immediate effects. Because customers that benefit from recommendations leave your site satisfied. They leave with the items that they wanted to buy more often. And as a result of that, they're going to be spending more time on your site in the future. They come back more often. They're less liable to defect to a competitor's site and buy products at a competitor, even if the competitor has slightly better prices. As a result, those customers remain your customers longer. The lifetime value of each customer increases. The customer base grows faster than it would otherwise. And of course, the total value of your customer base uh, increases. And those loyalty effects are really the secret success factors behind mega sites like, for example, Amazon that use recommendations so effectively. It's not simply the immediate conversion. It's the long-term loyalty benefits that really make the difference. You know, I keep hearing and reading about uh, companies, they start up and they have uh, a claim for a radical new revolutionary recommendation technology that's not collaborative filtering. And, uh, you know, I have to laugh a little bit uh, because, uh, quite frankly, you know, collaborative filtering is a very, very general term. And it really covers all forms of recommendation that use the collective behavior of customers uh, to choose items or to make suggestions. Uh, any technology that doesn't use the behavior of customers to make recommendations isn't collaborative filtering. But there's only one major alternative that I know of, and that is the content-based uh, recommendations. And between content-based recommendations and collaborative uh, filtering-based recommendations, you've pretty much covered the whole recommendation space. So all of these exciting new techniques, and some of them are interesting, uh, all of them fit inside of collaborative filtering. They're not a replacement for collaborative filtering, but they have some relationship to a lot of research and a lot of work of uh, other technologies that have gone before. And anyone who makes an extravagant claim uh, that the, their technology uh, falls outside of that you know, really uh, uh, has a lot to prove. You know, I uh, react to those kind of claims the same way as if somebody tells me they have uh, invented cold fusion or anti-gravity boots uh, with a lot of skepticism. You know, recommending products to people, or trying to uh, find products that people will respond to, uh, is really the simplest and most obvious way to use your knowledge about customers and what they want to create more value. But if you think about it, if you really know what people want and you have unlimited uh, resources to 
serve your customers online, you're going to do a lot more than simply recommending products. You're going to create highly interactive environments for customers to experience your products in. And each interactive experience that you create for customers is going to be different according to the needs and type of each customer. And in fact, all of the factors associated with uh, your knowledge about a customer can be used to customize a web experience and to feature the right products at the right time. If you just have enough knowledge and you just have enough uh, uh, engineering power to create those environments. So what will happen to the recommendation market over time is as the technologies improve, as our knowledge of customers improves, those environments will become richer, more interactive, more personal. It won't be just about recommendations uh, featured in a little box on the side of the site, but it will be about customized web experiences.